shoots the top of the key three. Nailed it! He surprised Gaffer with that, and the Warriors take a four-point lead with some nifty bench play. Now he's been really efficient tonight. 12 points on 5 for 7 shooting. Dub Nation is Chris Paul. My head coach Steve Kerr joins Willard and Dibbs today right here on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, we're expecting the coach somewhere around 5 o'clock, 5.15. It's kind of based on when the plane lands in Houston. They've had a little uh, wonky start, I guess, to their uh, their travel day, uh, which is par for the course. But, uh, but yeah, Steve Kerr will be on later in the show. Chris Harrison, Kyle Harrison's dad, is going to be on in uh, in a little bit less than a couple hours as well. We'll bat it all around. I do want to take a moment to say this for like the 18th time. And and this is, I really got to eat crow here. Like I just have a big old Nike in my mouth. Every time his name comes up or Grandy plays a highlight like that, dude, I can't believe the experience that I'm having this year watching Chris Paul play. I'm shocked. And I was wrong and let me say it louder, I was wrong, and I was wronger. Like, and and I never, by the way, you wouldn't know what the original point I even made was. I was never like, he's not good. I just was like, I, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> I don't think I can watch this guy and 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 root for him and and love that he's on the Warriors. I didn't think I could do it. And last night was a great example. And as we come down the stretch of the season, <laughs> as it gets late, both within games and within the season, you look at this guy, and it is the most comforting feeling with the ball in his hands. It's like, I know he's not going to turn it over. I know he's going to do something smart. This is probably going to lead to a bucket. I appreciate him in all kinds of ways that I probably should have for years. Blinded by the rivalry or the uniform that he was wearing, um, it's probably going to be this year and that's it. But I am thankful for this year because I will look back on Chris Paul's career in a different way because he was here for a year, and I never thought that possible. And so, I don't know. I hope I get to, to say this directly to him at one point because there have been moments through the the, the build-up to this and even the start of the year where... Um, I, I I definitely said some things that if Chris Paul was listening, I'm but he didn't enjoy that. I bet he didn't enjoy that. So um, anyway, there's that. Well, no, no, I'm with you, and I think most Warrior fans are probably with you on that take. It, it was weird to see him uh, in that uniform at first. But I got these numbers from a tweet last night. First 25 games for Chris Paul, he averaged eight points a game, was shooting 39 percent field goal percentage and 30 from three point land, 30 percent from three point land. Last 25 games, 10 a game. Yep. 50% from the field. Dog. 47% from three-point land. He's been fantastic. And he had some quotes. You guys had the, quote, the, the the sound from Chris Paul after the game last night. He was asked like if his legs were still fresh or more fresh. I didn't love the question, by the way. I think it was TK. I have some it. Chris Paul here. I don't know which one it, you it, want. It, what was there, it? There, he was asked about like being fresh at the end of the season because he hasn't played as much or been used as much as he's used to coming off the bench, not starting. Like, I'll just bring our listeners just, in. Yeah, I got just, four, I've got four clips. They're all, they're all on, good. On, on if he's concerned about Draymond's temper, on Draymond's passion. He had the one about Wiggins. On and, Draymond's block and and and... Uh, and just the team win, and then on Wiggins unlocking the team. Yeah, do the Wiggins one. Okay, here's Chris Paul. Wiggs probably gets the most junk talk to him on our team. <laughs> you know, I think it's because everybody knows what he's capable of, and we're a totally different team when he's aggressive. If you ever see us in the starting lineups before they walk on the court and dap each other up, the, first thing I, the only thing I say to Wiggs is be aggressive. We're a totally different team because he is so good, and uh, it, it unlocks everybody else on our team. Okay, that's from NBC Sports Bay Area, and here we go again. You won't know this because it was last week before you got in. But we did practically an entire show on how I, I get tight when I ha when you have to hear the Warriors openly talk about how they beg him every <laughs> night to play hard. And then he does sometimes. And when he does, the fan base is here to get furious with you if you're mad at him. But then when he doesn't, the fan base is furious with him. And I just wondered aloud if the Warriors players get tired of saying the same thing to Andrew every night. 
Chris literally just admitted it. He goes to say it to him every night. Dap him up, be aggressive. Steve Kerr did it two weeks ago on our show. I always tell Andrew to be aggressive. I'm like, oh my God, are you guys exhausted yet? Are you exhausted? Did you have to say this to this guy every night? Well, I'm kind of pissed because that was going to be my takeoff of that sound right there. <laughs> I missed your shows I'm, last week. I I'm apologize. But like, bad. if I got to keep telling the teammate to be aggressive, come on. That's not in there. You shouldn't have to tell people that. But he, when he is, like Draymond right now, going to the, the, the bucket and driving and layups, where's that been all year? He'll drive halfway and look to pass back out. And now he's just going all the. I love the way he's playing the block last night. It was great. Moses Moody was great last night. I mean, Moody. Just, what like, do you do with Moody when Kaminga? Him. But when Kaminga comes back, I don't know. It's Steve, I, ask Steve. It's his job, I, not and, mine. And, and I'll already tell you what he's going to say. We've done this interview so many times this year. I promise you, if I if you ask him about Moses Moody, he'll say it's just a math problem. You tell me. I got a certain number of minutes. That's what Farhan's supposed to say. Well, it's just a yeah, math problem. Exactly. I got a spreadsheet. If we play Moses, who do you want me to take out? Pods. Kaminga? But, but, okay. Wigs? Okay, but this is back to <laughs> Who my... Who do you want me to take out? Okay, but this is a team you're worried about as a 10 seed. When, when we're so, I, I don't know, the way Chris Paul's playing, the way P Pajemski's playing, the way Moody's playing, the way Kaminga was playing before he got hurt. Wiggins is aggressive now. Draymond looks like a different dude since the second half in San Antonio all of a sudden. Aggressive to the hole, playing crazy defense. Like I, I think that that he actually getting ejected was a good thing. Oh, here we go. No, because now he's like, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Here we go. I'm just saying. Well, but that's it's all about us. It's, it's it's basketball in a microwave oven for seven games, and then let's see what happens. Sure. So but, but, whatever. Who but, cares what happened already? But I do because because I actually think the Draymond thing and and fits right in with what we just said about Wiggins, and actually it fits with the entire Warrior team. Think about this now. What we what we just say about Wiggins? It's great that you're playing well, but it also annoys you that you have to say it to the guy every single game. Well, I could look at the Draymond situation in the last two games the exact same way. I could go, this is incredible basketball the last two games. Hey, Dre, why the hell does it take you tapping out of a game in Orlando, having the whole team say you're unforgivable, and have the whole fan base go sideways for three days ripping you for you to come out and play like this. Why can't you just inherently play like this? And then I can take that exact same question and say it to the entire team. Why can't you? We all see it. You see it. You've been saying it for two days. You can see how they can play. Why can't you do that all the time? Or at least most of the time. I'm not here. I get it. It's pro sports. You can't play great every night. But why? Why can't you be more consistent with your behavior? All of you. I mean, the, the point I was just saying yesterday, and I'll reiterate it because I believe it in my heart, just play basketball. And that's what they're doing. Just play basketball. Right. But they don't always. No. You're, like, you're always, loving them right it's, now. Are it's, it's, oh, you loving them now? I don't like the real housewives aspect yeah. of the team. I don't. But all of a sudden, they found 21 years old again. And maybe it's because there's only, it's a sprint to the finish. And we know what we're doing when we get to the playoffs because we've been there and done that. We have the formula. We know what it takes. We're experienced. We got young guys that will show how to do it. I don't think Pods is going to be influenced at all. He didn't care if he's playing in game seven no, or, but, but, or, or the G League. He's going to play the same way every night. But am I a jerk for responding to that by saying, if, you, if you're such veterans and you know how to do things in the playoffs, then you know that you don't do them from the 10 seed. So what did you do earlier this year to prevent this from being your reality? And my counter to that would be they've been through a lot. Okay. That there's human beings inside those uniforms. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. And the stuff they've been through is not an excuse they'll never tell you. We'll never hear it publicly. But they're still all wearing those black T-shirts with... Decky's, what is it, friend on, yeah. what is it, Beat Brate or whatever it says on the front of the, I mean, so. Well, that was, yeah, that was his, that was his nickname. For yeah, friend. Yeah. Brate means Brate, brother. Brate, Brate, Brate yes, means yes, brother. Yes, I knew yeah. that. I just flamed out on live at radio. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, no, I'm just saying, so what I always do in sports, and getting back to your initial point, I'm good at compartmentalizing in one game at a time and getting my entertainment as a fan 
based on one game and how they're playing maybe the last four or five. When you when you do a scouting report on somebody in baseball, you look at their last five or six games. You could be hitting 210 right now. But if you were hitting 180 no doubt. five games ago, no doubt. and you're seven for your last 13, I got to be careful pitching to you. No doubt. So the way I look at sports a little bit differently, I have a team that has resume, they have rings, they have the best shooter on the planet, they have some young players that are evolving right in front of our eyes at a rate that I don't think any of us expected. They're playing g- good basketball, yep, and they're just playing basketball all of a sudden. Like, a more simple form of the sport there's without a, the drama. There's a lot less drama right now. So We're, we're in a drama-free moment. However, meh. am I saying all this and they could lose one game to the Lakers? Sure, it's sure, sports. Sure, sure, sure. But I like what I'm seeing right now. I'm intrigued by what I'm seeing right now, and I can't wait to turn on their game right now. Yeah. And I watched... Well, I was watching both. I don't know what you did. I was watching I did, both I did last the, night. I did the laptop thing. Well, I was watching. And then at Nathan. halftime, I went over the Giants game, and then I forgot. That's right. And I was a little bit late getting back to the Warrior right. game, but That's then right. and, and then I just flipped. Well, the first half, I was watching neither. Oh, I had two games on, and there, I could. I, I'm ADD. I got to focus on one, so it was it wasn't working for me. So I watched Giants first, and then I turned on the Warriors after. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I we we definitely leaned Warriors early because baseball yes. baseball is easier to follow with one eye. Yes. Even in although the pitch clock changes it a little bit. Well, you just listen to the voices. Yeah. Well, if they, I know I was ah, then you got to watch. No, but what I wasn't going to do is do two sounds at once. <laughs> the sound was on the Warrior Maybe game. Maybe that's why I messed yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> like, how many play by play people I got talking to me at one time here? And then I did play by play on my own when I turned out. <laughs> I practiced play by play last night. How'd it go? Good. Did I'm, the, I'm did, great when no did, one's listening did, in my in my underwear in my living room. Did the Giants win the game that you called? Yeah. Okay, sweet. <laughs> they did. <laughs> Give me a they copy. Did. They did. Um, all right. Let's go. To, oh, Filmo Mike's on. Hey, Filmo Mike with uh, with Willard and FP. What's up, Filmo? Hey, what's up with it, y'all? I'm at a, I'm at a liquor store. I'm getting a brandy shot right now. Hey, I'm will you give me, me give me a Powerball crazy. ticket, Filmo? Give me a Powerball ticket. A Powerball ticket? Yeah. I'm paying it with my debit card, so I can't I can't give you no uh no Powerball ticket. But I love you though. All right. But thanks for trying. Real quick, Mark. You know what I noticed, Mark? You let other people talk more when uh Diz not there. I'm gonna have to snitch <laughs> on you on that one. <laughs> hey, what if I? What if I just said, you know, sometimes Dibs doesn't have anything to say. What about that? Yeah, you know what? I told somebody, I was like, I don't think Dibs, Dibs sometimes like to just chill. You know, Dibs, Dibs feel like he, he done did so much and put so many people into the radio business, so he probably just feel like he could take a day off or a break every now and then and let you do all the hard I, I told, I, I tell Dibs, I'm like, dude, you, you take this segment or you take this hour. He's like, no, you're good. That's okay, what happens. Got you, got you, got you. And then FP, FP, I don't know your first name, but FP got to stand for forever pimping or it got to be like a, 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 a new weed strain or something, man, because they got some crazy names. And I love your name, FP Santangelo. But now, nah, Mark, you know what's crazy about what y'all was talking about <laughs> is that, see, when you get, when you get, see, the Warriors, if the Warriors would have had, like, they had Steph Curry. So Steph Curry is an unbelievable force of nature. So if we would have had like a Milwaukee Bucks, sort of like, you know, you had you got Giannis. Giannis is a ump like he's probably one of the most dominant players in the league, right? And he only got one ship. But when you got Steph Curry and the Warriors pull off what they did, you know what I'm saying? It's almost feeling like you get it you get like a, a untouchable feeling. And a lot of times the the, the the, the new the new fans, I'm not trying to hate on them, but sometimes it's like this. When you were a kid or when you were younger and you get kind of like, if you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth when some adversity hits you, it's like, oh, man, you get the tripping. Like, oh, we need to trade everybody. But for the people that, that live a little, and if you didn't have a silver spoon in your mouth and then you got it, you got the bag, and then you, got, you, you have some perspective. So, like, I think a lot of times that line is split in between the middle where it's like you got fans that didn't really see, like, some struggle versus some fans that did see some struggle. And it's like the new fans, it's not, and again, it's not like they're the Milwaukee Bucks where they went one and they got Giannis and then, you know, they got to get Dame Lillard. We're we're considered, like, they asking us, like, do you think the, the Warriors could beat the Bulls in 96? Like, they asking questions like that. So... We looking at it like we, we you know, like we, 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 we're, we're, we're the ones. We're the ones. 
And I get it. So it's like, Dude, those are good points. Yeah, they are. Filmo, I'll, it's always good when you call, man. And, oh, and, man. And, and yes, you can get a Powerball ticket with debit. You can. Oh, man, I didn't know that. Okay, yeah. I got you. I but, got but, you. But, no, but, got no, you. spend it on you, man. And if you're a billionaire tomorrow, call back. I got. I'll still call. That's the only thing I probably would do is call okay. ninety five seven again. <laughs> ah, Filmo Mike is so, uh, dude, he's is a, a real one. He's a, his points are exactly what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, so you yeah. got the, the the old school Warrior fans that ride or die. We've been through it. But no, but they they went to every game of the loudest fan base on the other side of the bay. Win lose, the most loyal fan base known in the NBA. Right. And then you have, like in any sport, with the Giants. You get the front runners that all of a sudden they come along and they want to be a part of a winner, and that's fine. The bandwagon's big enough for everybody. But then maybe that sort of new fan base is like, this is so cool. I love winning. I love being a part of a winner. Parades are great. The ring ceremony, ah, oh, man. It, and they expect that every year. When the older fan base does have perspective, but maybe even some of the older fan base changes a little bit. You get your bag, like he was saying. And you could change a little bit. Success can change anybody. It sure does. It can does. change an old school fan, too. Yep. yep. So then you get the combination of new school fan that expects championships, old school fan that didn't care but now cares all of a sudden. Then you still have the old school fan that just is appreciative of one game, beating the Mavericks. And I think that's kind of how you and I, if I, I don't want to speak for you, kind of take our sports in. It's like one game at a time. Totally. We're entertained by what happened last night. I love watching Brandon Pajimski play. I, I love watching right now what Draymond's doing. I love how they're playing. Four and one trip. They beat the Mavericks. Things look great. And I'm just in that little bubble right now. And I refuse to get out of that bubble and think about everything that happened already this season because there's nothing you can do about that. It's about being in the moment as a fan. And that's, that's the way I, I don't know. That's just my summation of maybe how the Bay Area sports fan is in general right now. And you can say the same for Giants fans. You can say the same for 49ers fans. Um, I used to have a, uh, a rule, and it would bother some people sometimes, probably starting with my parents, because I even had this rule as a kid. Like, I learned very, very early in going to Candlestick Park, you do not leave early, period, because I was deathly afraid of missing something. And when someone would look at you and go, Mark, it's bedtime. They're down by five in the ninth inning. The only thought that would go on in my head is, Rally. Can you imagine if we're the idiots who leave the first six-run comeback in the ninth inning that year? I don't want to miss that. I don't care that there's .00001 chance of it happening. Listen to me. I can't wait to go get a Powerball ticket. Do you know what the chances are that I get all of the numbers tonight? I think that the Powerball has gone like 39 consecutive times without a winner. Nationwide. Your chances are better of getting hit by lightning eight times between now <laughs> and dinner than winning that thing. I don't care. Let's do it. I love it. Let's see what happens because somebody does hit those things. And I would love, uh, because by the way, uh, and I'll tell Phil all this right here on the air. If I do hit this thing tonight, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get a ticket in time. If I do hit this thing tonight, like I'm going to send some of that money to Filmo. I'm going to send some of that money to a bunch of people. That's actually the number one reason why I'd love to win. Okay, thanks. It'd, it'd be nice to take care of some bills. Yeah, I'll send you some because you're sitting here talking to me about this. People that affected your life throughout, I would love, like that's always been my dream. You hit the lottery, I'd love to, like, give me, I'd take a month off and just travel around to the people who have affected my life positively and show up at their doorstep with $100,000 or whatever. Hell, if I hit the Powerball, maybe a million dollars. Like, you're going to get a lot. couple of things. Okay, go ahead. First of all, I am, I don't know where, do I go to the DMV or the post office to <laughs> change my name to Forever Pimpin? <laughs> and I'm going to do that officially. Wait, wait. How many people, how many people do that? Like, I, I don't know. Like, Chad Ochocinco did, but from now on, I want know. you and everybody at the station to refer to me as Forever Pimpin' okay, Santangelo. Forever Pimpin'. How Thank many, you. No, I meant how often do people come up to you and make up things that the FP stands oh, for? trust me. I've heard them all. Heard them all. Best one I had come up with was freaking Paisan. Yeah, there's some bad ones, too, <laughs> that I've heard. I've heard them all. 
I think. Anyways, second thing is, to your point about leaving games early. It froze everyone when you went to Starbucks there earlier, and they're like, what's your name? And you're like, Frank. Yeah, because if you're I like, say what? FP, then it's a what ten. The it's a 10-minute, what does that stand for? Is that your real name? So I'd like everybody right. I've met in San Francisco since I came back the second time, I just say Frank. It's a lot easier. <laughs> You it just says, don't, FP's your name. But you don't look like a friend. Guess what? Here, you I, don't look like I a friend. I still got a point to get to here. And okay, I'll get to go, it. sorry. I asked my parents at Thanksgiving, how did we get to FP? And they said, OJ was a big deal in the 70s. And he was orange juice. And we named you Fruit Punch for orange juice. So I, you named me after a oh murderer. Oh, my gosh. You na- oh, wow. Yeah. So, like, OJ. I'm named after OJ. All right. So that's that, that just that, changed that's that story. Yeah. All right. You had a second point. Yeah. But where, where, where did you say you were working at a restaurant yesterday? You probably well, were served him. Oh, 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 yeah, at the Italian place. It was called Divino. And where? In Brentwood. Yeah, Brentwood. You probably yeah. had OJ as a kid. I did not. But anyway. The second point is, is leaving the games early. It. I'm on a roll. I've drank a lot of coffee today, so hold Good. on to your hats. Let's roll. Um, Frank from Starbucks. We had our high school. I was a junior, so it was our, our high school football banquet. And the best wide receiver on our high school team came back. To, he was in the Bay Area for a sports game. Okay. And it was Cal and Stanford. And we were asking about the play. And he's like, it was amazing. Da-da-da, lateral, lateral. The band came on the field. It was nuts. It was crazy. It was wild. He pulls me aside like halfway through the banquet and says, I lied. We left early. <laughs> I didn't see the greatest play in the history of That's college football. He left early. He didn't see it. He pulled me aside. He goes, hey, earlier I was, I was, I was lying. My dad and I left early. I'm like, no, you didn't. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? You know, go look at the highlights of the Kirk Gibson home run and see all the brake lights, the brake lights yeah. in right field. Yeah. You left. You left. It's forever pimp. 